Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. Alright, you recall in our last video that I had to replace that valve in the back of the refrigerator so that I could turn off the water so that it wouldn't leak on the floor anymore. Well, we got that done, but as you recall, I ran into a little bit of a wrinkle and had to cut a little bit of the drywall out. So today we're going to try and put that back in. I got to admit, I am not really a drywaller. I know the basics, but there's a lot of tricks to this that I don't know. And... If this was at a location that was visible in the house, I'd probably bring a professional in and have them do it. But since this is behind the refrigerator, since it's very, very close to the ground, um, I'm gonna do it myself, save the money. It won't be beautiful. I won't do it 100% right, but I'm gonna patch it up and it should look all right. So let's get going on this. Now, one of the things that actually did the most damage to the wall wasn't me cutting a hole in the wall, but the fact that this little faceplate thing here was actually glued to the wall. And so when I tried to pull this thing off, it peeled off some of the paint here a little bit. You can see it did it down here also. Uh, what I'm doing is just kind of gluing that back into position. Like I said, it's behind the refrigerator. It isn't going to be very visible. And... Uh, that it should be fine for this. It is a, this is sort of a utilitarian part of the house, so it isn't really going to be the end of the world. But like I said, it, it caused a bit of damage because it ripped here, it ripped here, it ripped here. And uh, you know what? That's just what happens sometimes when you, uh, when you glue everything into place. All right, so I got the piece back in. I will admit that it isn't uh, the best quality uh, drywall work in the world. Uh, but I got the piece in there, got it attached. I got some drywall mud into the seam trying to kind of seal it all together. It's not flat yet, but what I'm going to do is uh, let it dry a little bit and then we'll go in there and try and smooth it out a bit. I may have to sand on it a little bit to uh, remove some of the rough edges, but uh, that's the start. We're going to let it dry for a little bit. We'll put another couple layers in there, try and get it real smooth, and then we'll paint over it and it'll be hardly noticeable at all. All right, we've given this a little bit of time to dry, and uh, I've also gone over it with kind of a, a fine grit sandpaper just to kind of smooth off some of the rough edges. Now I think I'm going to hit this thing again with a putty knife, and let's try and uh, do a little better even now than uh, get to get this all nice and smooth. Look, look, you can see uh, that they've done something along here because it looks like the drywall ripped all the way up up to here. There's a line on there, so. This isn't the first time that somebody's done uh, done a little drywall work in here and probably won't be the last. All right, like I said, it just isn't going to be a perfect uh, drywall job, but it's going to be hidden behind the refrigerator, so I think it'll be fine. I got it relatively smooth in here. Fortunately, I've got more, a little bit more of the paint that I used to paint this kitchen. So I'm going to kind of go over what I've uh, done now with a coat of paint and let's try and make it look nice. So I got the first coat of paint on here and already looks a thousand percent better. Um, I do want to let it kind of dry up a little bit and maybe clean up things a little bit. Maybe sand things down a little bit. There's still kind of a little rough edges there. But, you know, like I said, uh, like I've said multiple times in this video in the last one, it doesn't matter as much here because it's going to be hidden behind the refrigerator. It's really close to the ground. Nobody's going to ever see it unless I pull the refrigerator out and at that point that's probably going to be the least ugly thing back here so um, I'm going to let this dry up a little bit and we'll come back and uh, finish this project off. All right a little bit of time has passed the paint has been given a chance to dry and I've actually put the little uh, face plate back on here uh, to kind of hide, hide things a little bit. It isn't the most beautiful thing in the world um, the, you can definitely see that it's been patched and patched poorly, but at this point, like I've said before, it doesn't really matter that much. It's going to be behind the refrigerator, and uh, the most important thing is it is not leaking. There is not a drip of water on this thing, so that's good. We got this thing back together, and going to kind of clean up the area around here and push the refrigerator back in, and I think this project is done. So a little time has passed by now and I got all the floor cleaned off in here and dried off. I'm going to push the, the refrigerator back and I think since I'm already in here, got everything out anyway, I think I'm just going to mop the floor in here. It probably needs that. 
One of the things I got to say that I like uh, with the new layout and uh, removing the water from the refrigerator is I can push the refrigerator a lot closer to the wall now than I used to be. It used to have to be like about a four inch gap between the wall just because there was that 10 foot long hose in there and if you push too hard it could kink it up and then, then you would really have a water leak in here. So that's a good thing. You know, I, what I did is I just kind of taped the hose to the back there. So it's just nice and flush and out of the way and it won't get tangled up in anything. And, uh, I think we're wrapping this project up. So I think that's all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time on escaping the mouse. Good night. So since that video kind of wrapped up a little quicker than they normally do, I um, figured I'd come out here and uh, show you how the garden's going here. These are my okra plants and right now this one's taller than I am. And what they do is they say that uh, if you cut the okra off, that just kind of sin uh, signals to the plant to grow more. Look at all this okra I got here on that one and on that one. I mean, some of these okras are, you know, that one there is like eight inches long. So there's three, four, or five of them that are ready to come off here. There's a big one there that's ready to go. There's a big one there that's ready to go. You know, I'm, like I said, I'm having to produce more recipes with okra in them just to use them up because I don't want to want to waste them. I think what I'm going to ultimately do is I'm going to probably take a bunch of these and slice them up and freeze them, and I think that'll uh, be a, a good option for me at some point. You know, I can pull them out in the you know, during off season and have uh, some okra for stews or whatever it is I'm doing. Because at this point they're coming so fast that, you know, I can't keep up with them, you know. It's, uh, I'm going to probably pull pull six or seven full-size okra off this off of these plants just today. And that's something, you know, I'm getting three or four of them a day. So that's uh, pretty amazing that they're doing this well. The tomatoes are nice and big, but as of yet, I have not received tomato one yet. So I don't know what's going on. There's flowers on them, uh, but no fruit yet. So I don't know. We're going to keep playing that one by ear and see what happens. I got a really good tomato crop last year. So hopefully the, these are just late bloomers or something like that. These are supposed to be cherry tomatoes. And, you know, I love cherry tomatoes. I found a lot last year. Uh, most of the tomatoes that came off the bushes that didn't even make it into the house. I just plopped them off and popped them right in my mouth right then. But so far, I haven't had anything to do with that. Like I said, those are pretty big too. That one, that bun plant right there is, is taller than I am. Like I said, this okra uh, bush here is uh, about the same height as that, and they're both taller than I am. The jalapenos are doing okay, but not spectacular. I haven't really gotten any fruit off of any of them this year so far. Now, I do remember last year that they were really kind of slow coming too. I didn't really start getting them until late in the year, but it's really late in the year now, it's August, and still haven't really gotten anything off of them. So I don't know, we'll see what happens on them. Um, but, you know, I think, I think they're benefiting a little bit now, getting a little less water, which was a good thing that needed to happen. And all the Flash's little uh, caves here are standing up well. I mean, it's only been a week since they've been up there, so hopefully they have, wouldn't have fallen apart yet. But because she doesn't have her wood pile as much anymore she's been using the cave a lot more and so i'm kind of pleased to see that when i peer inside the cave a lot of times she's in there just chilling out um i don't know she doesn't always spend the night in there but as i've said before she's using it uh, for what it was designed for basically a refuge from the afternoon heat so i'm glad to see that yeah, that's the harvest just for today. And some of these are absolutely massive. I mean, that one there is a good 10 inches long. They say harvest them when they're about 4 inches long. But some of these are, they're going to start being confused with corn on the cob or bananas at the length they're getting here. So, like I said, they're coming real well. This is 11 of them that I just harvested today. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop these up and I'm going to freeze them in a chopped up state. And hopefully that will uh, allow me to pull these out later in the year and use them.